nine, it looks. Okay, uh, I think I will start talking about packages. I will share my screen. Okay, I'm hoping you can see my screen. So I will talk about our packages. And um, as uh, Richelle mentioned, and as you talked about a little bit before, our packages is a way of extending R. And uh, there are a huge number of packages made so that uh, you should always check for that before you write something yourself because someone else may have already needed that and made a package that you can then reuse. So that's that's also a good thing to check for. And uh, you could go and look on the R CRAN page, for instance, and there are also some on GitHub and um, many R packages. So what is an R package is a question you might answer. And how do we find out which packages and versions are available? And what if you need more packages than the ones that are installed at the HPC center that you are currently at? And what differences are there between, for instance, HPC to end and Opmax, or between how do I see how to use it on some other system? So uh, the basics here, you uh, the objectives, you should understand the basics of what an R package is and you should learn how to check for our packages and also show how to install own packages on the different clusters is also what's going to happen here. So, so very quickly, what's a package? And an R package is a folder of, and a file structure that has R code and possibly other code and other files that is relevant for the package. There could be documentation, for instance, licensing and configuration stuff. And uh, there is a very simple example here that you can actually clone yourself if you want to take a look at it. You can go ahead and do this and that should work because this is uh, open to the public. Uh, and I could show you what happens when I do that. I'm going to go out of this directory here and then I'm going to clone it. Then I get our example. I'm going to go into it. And uh, then I'm going to use, uh, and it was on HPC Twin I had installed. It, it's tree is installed on Rackham. Yes. So there you can use tree. On HPC Twin, tree is not installed, but uh, I have made a uh, small uh, tutorial here that you can follow if you want to install uh, tree on HPC 2N. And that can be done even if you're not root because you're simply downloading a uh, Debian package and then unpacking it and then setting an alias so you can use it. But uh, go through this uh, small tutorial if you want to. And if you're on Opmax, you can already use uh, tree. And as you can see, tree shows the content of a directory. And in this case, there would be a description and there would be man. Man is the manual pages. And uh, there could be something like that there and there is. Then namespace and then the R code itself. So uh, this is a typical example. So uh, an R package can be in five possible states. There could be source code, and that's often the case when it's development form. So then you might uh, get it as source code. It might be bundled into a file. That's usually a so-called tarball. And uh, that would usually end in tar.gset or tgset. And that's called a source tarball. Or it could be a binary. That's how CRAN usually uh, distributes them. And that is uh, much easier to install. You don't need to compile anything. And then it could be installed, of course. Then it's a binary package that has been decompressed and is located in a package library. 
and then it could be in memory. That means you have already loaded it. And here is a small figure showing that, which I'm going to go past and continue here to show there are some sources here with more information also, if you want to look at that. Uh, but I think we should simply continue and go on to look at how you get to use it on our systems. And uh, you might want to know where this R interpreter will be searching for packages and uh, where you could find the libraries. And the easiest way is probably to start up the R interpreter and running the libpads function. So let's try to do that on both Upmax and HPC 2N. And if you want, you could try this yourself also, or you can try it uh, later. So I'm loading R. And it tells you that uh, most CRAN and beer conductor packages are installed and available in this module. So let's start up R. And then do uh, dot deep paths like this. And then it tells us that they are in this location. Now I'm going to quit. No. And then I'm going to do ls on this directory here that we just saw. And then you can see there are a lot of subdirectories here where some of these uh, packages are located under. So you could go into them and check what's there, see which are parallel and things like that. And uh, we could also see how it's done on HPC 2N. And there's something that you should notice here, which is that uh, it's slightly different uh, how you load things, just like it was uh, with Python, if you were there that day, then uh, there are prerequisites on HPC 2N. So let's see what happens here. We'll load this. And then start up R. And I will again do lib paths. Sorry, could you just move the window a little bit up? Because we can't see when you're typing, you just see it. Sure. I will Thank try you. and make the window slightly smaller so they will fit better. Can you see it now? Yes, it's perfect. Good. Uh, so I, so as you can see here, there are also some uh, paths here. And you could, just like you did at Upmax, you just uh, copy this file. And when you exit uh, R, you could do ls on this directory and see what's in them. So you are allowed to look in them. So both Upmax and HPC 2N has a large number of pre-installed packages. And uh, in HPC 2N, most of them are in the R module and some additional ones are in the R bundle bioconductor package. So let's quit and we should also do it in the right way. Uh, let's see how we load the R bioconductor, bundle bioconductor package. And it can probably tell me which ones are available, given what I have loaded. There is actually only two ones available. There's one for R4.0.0 .0 and one for R4.1.2. So that's lucky. That's for the one we are using. And we have, as you can see up here, already loaded the prerequisites for this. So we will be able to just load this immediately now because we already loaded those prerequisites when we wrote loaded R. And now when we start R and do lib paths, there are more places where it looks, as you can see. Okay. 
And uh, on Upmax, the module R underscore packages also contains uh, some packages, a lot of them, actually most of the ones that's in CRAN and Bioconductor. So let's try and uh, load that one as well. And uh, let's see if uh, there is one available for 4.1.1. And it was. And uh, let us again start R and do lib pass. And now there are uh, one more path here. So we could try and copy this here. And then I will quit R. And then I will say ls on this libra uh, library path here. And there are also some there. It was the other ones I should have picked. So that was a problem. LS, like that. And here is the majority of the packages uh, in Upmax. So when you're loading this R underscore packages module, you will, together with the ones under R, get the vast majority of the ones in CRAN and in Bioconductor. And most of them will also be available on HPC2N under R and uh, the Bioconductor package. So, so most of the packages are there. And uh, well, how do you actually find out if the one that you are going to use is there? Well, you could try load it directly and see if it's there. So you would open up R and then do library and the name of the package. And another option is to make a data frame of all the installed packages. And you do that like this inside of uh, R. And uh, in that case, you would get so many that maybe it's not really useful either, but uh, you can also grep. Grep is a Linux command, and you could use that on this uh, directory here. So you could say, I want to see if Zebu package is there. So I would say grep Zebu and then in this path here. And since it's a directory, you would do like that. Minus R does recursive. And it seems it takes a while to return. So let's continue while it's searching. Uh, anyway, what might uh, be easiest simply is to uh, go in and uh, it actually suggests a better way to do it on Upmax. So let's try that. Let's try and grab like this. And that is also one thing I should mention here. When you have loaded uh, an, a module, there will be some environmental variables that are now available. And uh, those can be used. And that's also often easier to use because uh, then you don't need to remember what the path was for this specific uh, version of R. You can see here, this is a path that is good for 411. But if you are using a different version of R, then you would have to check what is the name of it for that. But if you instead use this environmental variable, then it will contain this path by itself. And then you will not uh, have to remember what it is or check what it is. So you could use that and uh, that works as you can see. But uh, one thing you can do to see what the path is, is you could also do echo on our libs site. And then again, you get this same path you had up here. And the same thing works at HPC 2 n as well, of course. I will just do clear to get up higher on the screen. And then I'll do echo our libs site. And then again, you also get these paths that you got in with the dot lib path inside of R. So there is another way of uh, seeing what the paths to the uh, packages are. And again, it might simply be easier to use dollar R underscore libs underscore site, which uh, will be set when you have loaded the R and R packages modules. Okay, then.
So assuming that you checked and you found this package, you really need it, but it's not there. And uh, what to do then? Well, then you could install it yourself. And uh, the easiest thing is to install from CRAN if it's there. Uh, it may be, but most of the CRAN packages will be available on uh, SPC2N or Upmax, but uh, it's worth checking if it's there. And uh, we need, as the first thing to do, is to create a place where we can put these uh, own installed packages. And we also need to tell R where we find this place. And uh, this setup uh, only has to be done once, but it has to be done for each version of R you use once. And R reads a file in your home directory that's called .renviron. It should be created by R on first run, or you can create it with touch $home slash .renviron on a Linux system, because touch simply creates a file with nothing inside it. But I would like to see what is in this dollar home or environ for me, if anything. And it tells me that our libs user is this directory. And that is because I actually has uh, created it. But uh, yeah. Uh, if you that is because I have installed packages to R. If you have not, then this R environment uh, file will be empty, and you can put something into it, just like I had, with this command here. And what that does is that it outputs this line here with echo, and then it sends it into your file. R dot R environ in your home directory. When you have done that, it will have this content uh, or the place you want to put them. As you can see, I have put them in um, in my project directory instead. And if it's lots of packages and you just want to use them while you have a project, it might actually be better to put them there than in your home directory. And the reason for that is that they can also take up a lot of space. So you may want to change dollar home to slash project slash r minus pi minus jl slash whatever you called uh, your subdirectory, for instance, your username maybe, and then always this capital R minus packages minus percentage capital V. And the, this, uh, I don't remember the English word for them. Uh, what this percentage V does is that uh, it gets replaced by the version of R that is currently loaded. And that means that uh, it will know to check in that directory for the version of R that is uh, currently loaded. If, of course, you create uh, one such a directory here, or otherwise it will look in it and there will be nothing. So we should actually make uh, a directory like this. And since I'm working on for one, one here. I will create this uh, directory. And I will just scroll down to show you where we are doing it. And in this example here, they are placing it in uh, the home directory. And if we are only creating one, uh, installing one R package, then that's probably fine. If you are installing many, put it in your storage. Uh, directory. And the only thing is change dollar home to the path to your storage directory, both here and here, if that's what you want to do. But we're only going to install one package, so it's probably going to be fine. Minus P is just creating any all the other directories on the way to this directory. I mean, if you were saying 
create directory A under directory B and directory B didn't exist, then it would create both of them when you have minus P or make D. Okay, so now there is a directory here. And I had the right thing set in my uh, R libs site and in my R environ, sorry. And uh, then I would check uh, for a list of uh, repos to install from in uh, CRAN. And in this case, uh, I suggest we just use uh, one. We should go and check for one. Let's see. I mean, there's one in uh, Umeå, and uh, that is the one in Sweden that's usually used. It's under the Academic Computing Club in uh, Umeå. So uh, we could try and actually install Stringer from CRAN this way. And uh, I already in loaded R and the prerequisites on both places here, so we could go ahead and install it. So what this does, from the command line is uh, it tells it this will be run in R and uh, you will install the package stringer in the from the repo. And then this repo here is the one in Umeo. And you can go and see if there is a better repository closer to you in this here, uh, this here. And you should do that if you are not located near Sweden, then uh, you should find another mirror that's closer to you. It's always good to pick the closest uh, mirror when you're installing something, simply because it will be faster and less chance of uh, timing out. And you could also install from inside of R. And again, you then just uh, give the name of the package you want to install and you give the repo you want to install from. So I will try start R. And then I will run this command. And you can see here, it's placing it into this uh, directory I just uh, created. And it will take a little while for it to install it. talk while it does that. But you could try to do this yourself as well. Um, so what if the package is not on CRAN? Well, maybe it's on GitHub. That is another place there are many packages and you could go there and check for them. And if it is on GitHub, you could install it directly from inside of R and uh, in that case, you would need to install something called DevTools package. And that only has to be installed once. And uh, when you have done that, see, now something is happening over here. It's installing. Uh, so you install the package DevTools only once. And uh, then you use this DevTools to install from GitHub by saying dev tools, uh, colon, colon, install underscore GitHub, and then the developer's name slash package. And there is an example that uh, you could try and do here. And if this finishes soon, I could also show you how to do this. But meanwhile, you could uh, make sure you are logged in and make sure you have loaded R and uh, do this up here, have created uh, this uh, directory and have put this file here into r.environ, to dot r environ. So do this and uh, do that down here. And when you have done that, you can both do uh, this. Uh, you can do this example here, and you can also do this example here. And they should both run. 
and it's finished now. Good. It has installed Stringer, and as you could say, it there was a lot. See, there was a lot of output because it most likely installed some other packages that are prerequisites for Stringer. So that is what will happen. So I will simply take this, and then I will install Dev Tools. And since I didn't give a repository this time, it will ask you for one. And you can scroll up and see which one to pick. And you'll see Sweden here. And uh, then you say, I will pick number 59. And then it installs from this uh, repository. And as you can see under the installation process, it uh, compiles here because it's not a binary. At least not all of them are. It may take a little while. That gives you time to catch up. That's quite a lot of uh, prerequisites. This package Quantstrat has some prerequisites. And uh, when you're installing this from GitHub, you probably need to install those first also. So we are going to do that. And I could mention that you could also be in this situation. There's a package is actually not on CRAN, it's not on GitHub, or maybe you simply want the development version of it or you got the package from your colleague or something, just uh, then you have to download manually and install it. And that will be a fairly rare situation now because there are so many packages that are vetted and placed on CRAN or at least on GitHub. But um, you can install them directly yourself. And uh, when you do that, you should, of course, as always, make sure that it is uh, what you think it is. That's a package that you can trust. And uh, if it hasn't been vetted, it may have bugs, but maybe that doesn't matter because perhaps you are even part of the development. So you want to install it anyway. And uh, you can do that with R underscore, sorry, capital R, capital command, capital install, and then minus L, the path to the R package that you downloaded. And then the R package itself as a tarball, for instance. And uh, if you're installing it this way, then it will not check for prerequisites and things like this. So if there are any dependencies, you will have to handle them or it will fail. And then you will see, oh, it failed on that. I need to install this first, you go install that and uh, like that. And then when you have all the dependencies, you can install it uh, this way. So uh, it works. It's just something you need to, uh, where you have to handle everything yourself. But in most cases, I will assume your packages will be on CRAN or on GitHub or something like this, which is uh, definitely the more usual uh, situation. This takes quite a while. So uh, I will suggest that you simply try and do this yourself. And uh, there are also some talk about uh, installing packages on Bianca, but I'm not going to go through that, but uh, there is uh, some information from a Bianca course where you can look at that. Um, but try do the exercise, there is, uh, a solution for Rackham, it is done the same way except the paths and the names of uh, the R version on uh, Kevnik Kaiser. And then try and also do this example here. As long as you have set up the uh, R environment file with uh, the path to the directory where you have, uh, where you want to have your R packages, then it should work. So I will suggest that you try this.